Good morning. Um, thank you for joining this session today. Um, especially, you know, being so early and after the party yesterday and all that. So I appreciate you being here. My name is Marcos Hernandez. I'm a field principal uh, at VMware and I oversee our um, OpenStack and containers as well as the um, NSX integration um, services and options here at VMware. Uh, also here in the audience, we have Ram and Gary, our lead um, engineer managers for our NFV practice and neutron integration respectively. So if you had later have technical questions about roadmap and things that are happening with the product, uh, we'll try to address those uh, collectively. Um, so if you have a question, um, I'm being asked to ask you to use the mic so it gets recorded and uh, we can all hear that on the YouTube uh, replay. Um, so we're gonna start with a little bit of an architecture and then we'll get right into a technical integration. So bear with me here while I uh, give you a little bit of an introduction to uh, where we are with NSX today. Five years ago, we set out uh, to create this vision for NSX everywhere, trying to extend the services of NSX, our network virtualization platform, to every endpoint and every uh, workload out there in, and, and beyond the data center. So we have recently announced this uh, uh, program or this uh, notion of the virtual cloud network. And the virtual cloud network is a software-based fabric that extends beyond the data center and that brings the benefit of network and security virtualization to workloads that are uh, actually being hosted um, outside of the traditional applications with NSX, which are mostly data center focused. Right? So we'll, we have a play now across multiple clouds, and I'll show you the, the portfolio as it uh, exists today. We're going through a, a big rebranding effort for NSX. We're absorbing some other technologies, and we have now placed not only in the data center, but also in a multi-cloud environment. We're also participating in edge computing, and we also have uh, other services like SD-WAN. And the attributes of the virtual cloud network, which is enabled by NSX, it's a software-based fabric, security is an integral part, it's a built-in part of this architecture, and we also passionately believe that the virtual cloud network has to be, or has to extend beyond ESXi in this multi-cloud world. So you're gonna hear a lot about the virtual cloud network as this notion that encompasses all these different endpoints and services, okay? In terms of like products and offerings, this is the current portfolio. And again, we ma made uh, some uh, rebranding announcement uh, at um, Dell conference a few weeks ago. So NSX is now um, a brand as opposed to a product, right? And, and NSX is a basic enabler of the virtual cloud network. So where we have traditionally uh, been playing is in the data center space, but we're also announcing or have announced uh, an NSX cloud product where your on-prem management and control plane can actually have visibility and control over cloud native applications in Azure and AWS and later uh, GCP. Um, App Defense is our uh, Goldilocks uh, project, which is now also integrated into NSX for application uh, protection. Uh, NS, uh, VMware acquired a company called VeloCloud, so we're also making a play in the SD-WAN space, and being a networking solution, it, it only made sense to put it under the NSX umbrella. And um, there is a solution for um, hybrid connectivity in hybrid cloud, it used to be called HCX, uh, and now it's been rebranded NSX Hybrid Connect. And the idea there is that if you have on-prem infrastructure based on vSphere, and then cloud infrastructure based on vSphere, you can use NSX uh, Hybrid Connect to uh, do live migration and move applications across uh, those two uh, environments. And then on top of that is the visibility uh, services that we're providing with satellite products also in, uh, uh, integrated into NSX, such as vRealize Network Insight on our day two operations and management tools. So this is the new portfolio of NSX. And uh, what we're gonna talk about today, right, is on NSX data center, specifically how NSX data center integrates into OpenStack. And more specifically, how NSXT 
our um, new platform for containers and, and, and OpenStack integration works with OpenStack. So that, that will be the bulk of this presentation. We'll, we'll talk about the integration points and the different services that we offer there. Um, NSX Data Center uh, integrates with OpenStack. That's why we're here, obviously. But it's also the platform with NSXT, the platform that uh, will provide you visibility into containerized applications. We have an integration with Kubernetes. We have an integration with Pivotal Application Services. We are going, very shortly, in the next few weeks, going to announce bare metal support for, for NSX. So you don't need a hypervisor. right? And that is this notion of the NSX virtual cloud network. Uh, you don't need a hypervisor, so we'll support uh, uh, bare metal workloads as well in our NSXT data center edition. And, um, we also have added in NSX, in coordination with the vSphere team, the BDK acceleration for the compute nodes to satisfy the performance requirements of the NFV use case. So a lot of, uh, going on, big announcements. And again, we're realizing, finally realizing this vision of bringing NSX to, a, to every endpoint and, and having it everywhere. And this, you've probably seen this slide before. I like it a lot because this NSX ring to, uh, shows all the touch points and all the things where we currently either have an offering or will inevitably have an offering, okay? So we're gonna focus here on the OpenStack integration with uh, multi-hypervisor private clouds, okay? Um, so let's uh, get started here. So at a high level, this is what the integration with OpenStack looks like. Um, we, uh, OpenStack Neutron, integrates into NSX Manager, which is our API server in the NSX uh, platform. And there is a plugin called the Neutron plugin for NSX that is in charge of translating Neutron API calls into NSX RESTful API calls. So it's a, it's a plugin that uh, uh, is integrated into our own edition of OpenStack, but it's also upstream and can be consumed standalone by our, you know, the several partners that are also play in this space and uh, that we have uh, validated with NSX. So, but, so this is the integration point right there. So Neutron uh, points to NSX Manager and NSX Manager uh, takes all the Neutron API calls and honors those API calls in coordination with the control plane. Um, there is a big difference in N between NSXT, this platform that uh, uh, we're referencing today, and NSXV. NSX vSphere is the NSX that you've probably seen and experienced. If you, if, you have a, uh, if you have been exposed to NSX, that's probably the NSX that you know. And NSX vSphere, as the name indicates, is tightly integrated with vSphere. In NSXT, we don't have that integration. NSXT is completely divorced from vCenter. And that is a good thing, because it allows us now to go and serve uh, applications and workloads that are not necessarily hosted under a vSphere compute environment. But in doing that, in divorcing NSX from vCenter, uh, we also lost a lot of like introspection and knowledge of the virtual environment. So you, 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 you will definitely not have uh, the same options for creating firewall rules, and you won't have visibility and access to the same objects uh, that are provided in a virtual environment. But in, in the case of OpenStack, that is not a, a, a bad thing, because in OpenStack, the abstraction for consumption of network and security is provided by Neutron. So the idea there is that somebody interacting with NSX through Neutron shouldn't really know that the backend, the network backend, is a VMware SDN solution, okay? Because you're actually going through Neutron to consume networking and security. Another interesting aspect, right? It has been our, for a long time, our belief in the NSX team that you distribute where you can and you centralize where you must. So we saw an opportunity to also take our control plane and make it a distributed part of our platform. This is a big, big difference between the NSXT and NSXV. The control plane has always been highly available, but in NSXT it's also distributed. So there are elements of the control plane that also run local to the hypervisor, and this is the architecture that, will, that we expect will take us to mega scale, right, and thousands and thousands of endpoints. Um, so that, that, is, uh, that is the approach. And then in the data plane, NSX Data Center today serves, again, if we're talking about hy hypervisor virtualized workloads, serves ESXi and KVM. But like I mentioned very shortly, and you saw it in the previous slide, we're also gonna be announcing support for bare metal uh, workloads coming soon. 
and also uh, Kubernetes, which uh, is supported uh, today. Okay. Um, at a high level, right? If we're looking now in the context of OpenStack, how is this all uh, integrated and coming together? Uh, in case you didn't know, hopefully this is not news uh, to you, but we, we VMware, we provide a, a, an OpenStack distribution called VMware Integrated OpenStack. VMware Integrated OpenStack is an opinionated OpenStack distribution that only works on VMware infrastructure. So if your compute is provided by VMware vSphere, if your networking is provided by VMware NSX, and your storage is provided by data stores served by vSphere or, or, or vSAN, it makes sense if you want to do OpenStack to use VIO because we integrate with all these uh, VMware components. And uh, there are several integration points for network, um, compute, and storage. We have plugins just like we have a Neutron plugin that translates Neutron API calls into NSX API calls. We have drivers for Cinder and Glance that do the same on the storage side. And they integrate into vCenter. Okay, so this is what uh, VIO architecture would look like. Obviously, we're gonna focus on the networking services today. So that's what we're gonna be talking about. And again, if you're not using uh, VMware Integrated OpenStack, or if you have a need for dual hypervisor support, or you have your KVM region and your VMware region, there are several use cases there that will also satisfy. You can also integrate NSX and create a common network and security backend for multi-hypervisor OpenStack implementations. We have this in production with uh, several customers, and Red Hat, Canonical, SUSE are partners, OpenStack partners, that integrate with NSX and serve, because not everybody uses vSphere, not everybody likes vSphere, so we, again, from the networking uh, standpoint, we're trying to serve all those different workloads. Okay, and this is a good thing. This is a good thing, and, and I'm very thankful uh, that uh, VMware understood that there, there's a lot of applications out there that are not under vSphere and that we need to extend uh, our services to. So in this, in this case, uh, you would have an integration that looks exactly, you know, from a Neutron perspective, you will have uh, the same plugin now integrated into Neutron, but from a computer storage perspective, you're gonna be onboarding different hypervisors. So this is absolutely uh, feasible in our architecture. And because we are divorced from vCenter, because NSXT doesn't really know or care what a vCenter is, that gives us the opportunity to support multi vCenter environments. So, and this is, this is great because it, it actually gives us more choices when it comes to creating Nova and Cinder availability zones across multi vCenter topologies. We also support Neutron ACs in this, in this platform. So neutral availability zones. So, but, but going back to a multi V center, it, if, if I, I, I can have a disperse and multi V center topology where my, my compute infrastructure is actually served by multiple V centers, and I can still have this integrated into a single OpenStack control plane and ser serve those uh, V center environments as well as the KVM environments with the same NSX. Okay. Um, so let's go through like the basic Neutron workflows that are table stakes in, in, in Neutron. So in Neutron, when you create a network, Neutron Net Create or OpenStack Network Create, right, if you're using the CLI, what's gonna happen in the back end is that NSX will take that API call and then serve uh, that network by creating what we call a logical switch. So a network in Neutron is a logical switch in NSX. And this logical switch can be a software overlay switch where we use Geneve encapsulation. NSXT does not leverage VXLAN. We use a different encapsulation protocol. Um, and, or it can be also a VLAN back logical switch. So if your application requires uh, direct access to uh, uh, a VLAN, we can also provide that. So we support tenant networks and provider networks, and they can be overlay or VLAN back, okay? So if you are creating a two-tier application, create another network in Neutron, then we'll create another logical switch. And again, depending on the specific use case, this will be an overlay network or a VLAN back network. The HCP is an integral component in OpenStack, as you probably are well aware. So we replace DNS mask with our own highly available and highly scalable DHCP services. We, leverages, we leverage something called the services router, which is a stateful component that runs in the 
uh, NSX platform. And with this, we can serve um, the IP addresses to, you know, to the HTTP clients in Neutron. Okay, so we don't use the NS mask. We have our own proprietary implementation of the HTTP, which is highly available and scalable. When it comes to security, specifically East-West, neutron security groups are translated into distributed firewall policy. Right? So hopefully you, you know what a distributed firewall is. Uh, it's the key component that enables the micro-segmentation use case for NSX. So everything that you've learned about micro-segmentation is now readily available in OpenStack by, by means of the neutron security groups. We have a layer three, layer four stateful firewall in the kernel of the hypervisor that can enable east-west, optimize east-west security in, the, in this case. But from a neutron perspective, you're consuming you know, the whitelist policy of a neutron security group. Then you, know, you need to connect this application to the rest of the world, right? So this is where the neutron routers come into play. Uh, I'll, show you, uh, I'll show you in a later slide how the uh, routing architecture works in NSX. But when you provision a neutron router, we create in NSX a namespace for this router and associate it with something that we call a T1, a tier one router. So I'll explain how that works in a moment. But this tier one router is actually backed by another layer of routing in NSXT provided by something called a tier zero. And the tier zero is the routing entity that you peer with your physical network. So in Neutron, these two routers are really going to look like one. But if you were to like trace route the outbound traffic from your application uh, network uh, to, to the outside world, you will see two routing hubs. And there is a slash 31 network that automatically connects the tier one and the tier zero routers. So we have a two tier routing architecture for ingress and, uh, 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 and ingress uh, traffic in, in NSXT. Okay. Uh, we support NAT and no NAT uh, topologies as per the Neutron uh, specification. If you're doing NAT and you want to use floating IPs for providing inbound connectivity into your applications, then you know, we also can exercise that NAT uh, rule in the tier one router. So floating IPs are obviously uh, fully supported here. We also have support in the plugin for load balancing as a service in Neutron, specifically LBAS v2. So we have all those uh, use cases uh, uh, supported and addressed, with the ex exception of TLS termination. TLS termination, if we're talking specifically about our OpenStack distribution, VMware integrated OpenStack, we expect that VIO will eventually integrate Barbican so we can support TLS termination in which, uh, as per the Neutron LVAS uh, specification. But that support in the platform in NSXT exists uh, today, and it's it's, it's also being addressed. The gaps that we have are also being worked out. Okay? So these are the basic workloads uh, in Neutron. One that I'm not showing here is Firewall as a Service. Our plugin also supports Firewall as a Service v1. So that is a firewall that actually gets programmed on the tier one router, on the stateful component of the tier one router. So you can offer north south protection in addition, uh, that perimeter protection, in addition to the east-west security that is provided by neutral security groups. And then there are other private implementations in our plugin, uh, which are augmenting the capabilities of Neutron. And I'll be happy to discuss uh, those um, uh, after this session. We have support for admin policy. These are private implementations that you still consume these services through Neutron, but these are things that are specific to NSX where we're trying to give you more um, diversity in terms of uh, options for your uh, network and security consumption. So we, we can talk about the non-standard neutron services that we support in our plugin uh, after the session. Happy to, to elaborate on that. Okay. Uh, when we, um, th there is also, and this is probably not a very uh, uh, well-known fact, but uh, we essentially have three plugins out there four if you count some of, some of the legacy ones. But uh, we essentially have three plugins out there. We have an NSXT plugin, which is the focus of the session. We have an NSXV plugin that has been serving us very well in OpenStack environments where the infrastructure is vSphere only. So that, uh, that is also out there. And we have this VDS plugin, which is a basic layer two plugin for connecting uh, Neutron to uh, a vSphere environment that is leveraging the virtual distributed switch. 
So I, I just added this slide right here as a comparison, right? I mean, you lose a lot when you don't go with NSX, right? And be, be, besides the obvious commercial interest that VMware has in promoting NSX, the point that I'm trying to make with this slide is that uh, the more I talk to customers and the more I discuss their networking and security needs, uh, the less adequate a layer two only solution becomes. Good enough networking is not good enough for Neutron. Chances are that if you start with just a basic layer two uh, kind of service, you eventually will have to migrate to additional services. And in, 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 in our architecture, uh, distributed firewalls, security policies, things like that are only possible if you're using NSX. So I just wanted to you know, throw that slide out there, not, to, not to, so just to show you the options, but also to show you uh, the additional value that we provide with NSX. Okay. In terms of topologies, um, here's a summary of the various topologies that we see out there. I'm going to uh, specifically highlight the no NAT topologies. When we talk about OpenStack in the enterprise use case, and I would also uh, include um, the NFV use case in this uh, conversation, we typically see that the enterprise wants no NAT topologies. So I want networks in uh, that are actually uh, that have routable IPs, where my applications, my instances, my Nova instances actually get a routable IP. So I call that, and this is me making up stuff, I call that the enterprise model for, for networking. And I have blogged about this. We have a, I had a session uh, at a OpenStack Summit in Austin where we co-presented with a customer and we talked about the merits of no NAT topologies in the enterprise use case for OpenStack. With that said, you can mix and match. Many customers do that, uh, where you know, they have a, a diversity of topologies, no NAT and NAT topologies, perfectly fine, totally supported by the plugin. Now, if you use no NAT and the networks behind your neutron routers, which are, have NAT disabled, you expect them to be routable, you have to find a way to make, advertise those, those networks and make the routing connections between your physical world and the uh, OpenStack. Topologies. So that's where protocols like BGP come into play. And in our NSXT implementation, we have greatly, greatly simplified the way BGP works and how and where exactly it is configured. So it's a long winded way of saying that we can provide routed topologies in NSXT and OpenStack without leveraging BGP as a service, the BGP speaker that is supported in Neutron. Um, if you, have not, uh, if you haven't played with that and you don't have a, a lot of experience with a BGP speaker, it's kind of an a interesting uh, way of, of providing BGP, and it's kind of like tricky uh, to configure. So it, it's perfectly fine. We support it on the NSXV side with no issues, and we have several customers using BGP as a service in Neutron. But the way to configure is actually tricky. So you, those complications and configurations and having to maintain a BGP configuration in Neutron is not required when you use NSXT. And I'll explain why that is. Okay. Again, bottom line is that you can provide routed topologies without necessarily having to worry or concern yourself with BGP as a service in Neutron. Okay. Let's start with the routing uh, services in NSX. We have an opinionated routing implementation in NSXT. There is no way around this. This is how it works. This is how we decided to implement it. We have this notion of a tier zero router, which we connect to the physical world. So this is where you would do your BGP. And right here is exactly I'm, I'm, what, what I was referencing earlier about not having to leverage BGP as a service, because the BGP peering that you do in NSXT happens between the tier zero and the physical world. It's a one-time thing. The tier one routers are your neutron routers. When you do a, create a, a router in neutron, you are actually creating a namespace for a tier one router. And that router doesn't have to do BGP. The, the NSX controllers automatically take the networks that are learned on the tier zero and publish that, those networks to the tier one, and vice versa. Every time that you plumb a network to a tier one, we take that subnet and we publish that to a tier zero. So we essentially have replaced with a control plane operation in NSX another control plane operation with a dynamic routing protocol. 
So there's no dynamic routing protocol that happens between the tier zero and the tier one. The NSX controllers, knowing all the topologies, are in charge of uh, uh, posting and publishing those uh, routes. So there's no need for the tier one to run BGP. Therefore, there's no need in Neutron to do BGP as a service when you use NSXT. Hopefully that's, that's clear. Another interesting aspect about uh, this routing uh, implementation that we have in, in NSXT is that it is distributed where it needs to be and it is centralized when it needs to be. So there's no need in NSXT when you're using the NSXT plugin in Neutron to create a DVR, a distributed uh, router. There's no need to, to actually make a Neutron API call to create a distributed router. The distributed router and the distributed routing functions happen automatically. There are components of the tier one and the tier zero routing running locally on the hypervisor. So if you have very simple routing topologies, chances are that that traffic traversing you know, tier one and tier zero routers maybe doesn't even leave the hypervisor. So say that you have a web VM and an application VM on a two tier app and you have a router, a tier one router separated in those two. If you have the web VM and the app VM in the same hypervisor, that traffic will never leave that hypervisor. And there's no additional configuration that is required. For, for, for distributed routing uh, when you use the NSXT uh, plugin. And then there's this notion in our architecture of an edge cluster. An edge cluster is a, could be a bare metal cluster, it could be a VM based cluster where we run the stateful components of the tier one and the tier zero routers, as well as the peering point with the physical network. So we leverage this notion of an edge cluster not only to connect north south but also to run stateful services in a routing implementation. And stateful services in a routing implementation are NAT, Network Address Translation, DHCP, Metadata, uh, Nova Metadata also runs as a stateful service, and Load Balancers are run as a sta stateful service. So that is an example of stateful services that we leverage uh, the edge cluster. But again, this is all hidden from you, okay? Uh, you don't need to actually specifically and deterministically create uh, a distributed router in NSX or create a stateful component. The architecture takes care of uh, that placement and consumption automatically. Okay? So here's a possible um, implementation of a, a, a routing architecture. And again, the point here is that I only configure BGP or static routing. External BGP and static routing are the only two options for connecting the tier zero to a physical network. So we only do that on the tier zero, not, not the tier one. Again, they publish, uh, we publish the routes uh, automatically via the NSX controllers, okay? Uh, back to this, this NSX, uh, uh, NSXT edge cluster. This is a very, very important component of the architecture. And what I'm trying to highlight here is that you have to design it for scale. We can run this edge cluster as VMs, and if you decide to do that, we only support those VMs on ESX, ESXi on VMware. Or you can run, this is an interesting implementation, very different from uh, previous implementations of NSX. We can also run this edge cluster as a bare metal server. So if you want uh, scalability, sub-second convergence for routing services, as well as uh, more performance, um, um, you, you can use a bare metal uh, edge cluster. R regardless of uh, your, you know, whether you're using bare metal or VMs in this edge cluster, this, this edge cluster is DPDK accelerated. So we put a lot of effort in and focus really on delivering performance on when we run uh, this uh, network services on x86 and we leverage in DPDK to be able to support you know, high throughput with very low packet sizes, okay? But obviously, in the, in the um, uh, bare metal uh, uh, implementation of the edge cluster, our convergence time and our performance is actually higher than in the VM form factor. With that said, we're noticing, interestingly enough, that many of our customers implementing this architecture still go with the VM form factor. They look at the performance uh, differences between VM and bare metal. They said, okay, I can live with this, right? I can still get throughput, maybe not as, high, as fast of a uh, rapid convergence, uh, you know, when things break or fail, but I have VMs, and VMs are easy to manipulate or easier 
to manage than bare metal, right? I can V-motion those VMs. I can do things to the VMs that are, are uh, typically more difficult with bare metal servers. So, but you know, you have two options there. Um, the HCP, again, it is it's a stateful services that runs in the edge cluster. And the big highlight here, what I really want to highlight is that we're not based in this DHCP implementation on DNS mask. And that's a good thing. Because if you've dealt with DNS mask, you're probably aware of the limitations and the, some of the problems that exist there. So we replace that with our own DHCP implementation. We can scale to, to thousands and thousands of endpoints uh, in, in this, in this um, architecture. Uh, as mentioned earlier, we support load balancing as a service, as well as firewall as a service. We're fully compliant. Uh, our load balancing as a service is not based on Octavia or anything like that. We created our own load balancers. We had added load balancing support in NSXT uh, 2.1, which we announced last December. And you know, with that uh, supporting the back end, you can now just consume load balancers uh, from Neutron, as well as firewall as a service. Um, if you get uh, with Gary uh, later, we can talk about the plans to evolve our firewall as a service implementation, because that's also being worked out, as well as uh, some VPN as a service uh, exploration that we're, we're, we're doing. Okay, uh, this is another interesting implementation. Our metadata um, access, access to metadata in, when you use NSXT happens out of the box, automatically, right? I mean, I, you know, in, other OpenStack implementations of where, whether you're using just a standard reference implementation with Neutron, you, you, you'll know that you, sometimes you have to worry about you know, host routes and things like that, and maybe adding routing in your physical network to be able to get the packet from the instance to where the Nova metadata service resides. We have this thing, this beautiful thing called network virtualization in NSX, with, where we use a combination of overlay topologies to basically connect an instance to the metadata service, irrespective of the topology of the physical fabric. So we, it's network virtualization at its best. And, and when, when we talk about Nova uh, metadata. Uh, and the idea here is when, when cloud in it, you know, it just calls you know, Nova metadata on 169 to 54, 169 to 54, you didn't have to do anything on the physical network to enable that connectivity because you're using network virtualization via NSX to provide that access. And your compute cluster could be over there. Your edge cluster and management cluster where you have your controllers and Nova metadata could be over here. You could have a least spine underlay fabric separating these two clusters you know, with multiple routing hops. And still, via overlays, we'll be able to connect uh, to the metadata service with no changes or modifications to the physical network. Other than, obviously, the MTU has to be able to accommodate our encapsulated uh, frames in Geneva. Okay, so uh, another rendering here and representation of the supported topologies. Uh, we have some customers who do not want or are not ready for overlay networking. Uh, that is definitely changing. I mean, this was heresy like five years ago. You would say overlay and then the network team would like freak out, hey, I'm gonna lose visibility and all that. I think that we, that ship sail and the merits of overlay networking and software-based networking are now a given. However, if you're not ready for network virtualization or if you have some reasons why you still want to keep your workloads, your OpenStack instances on VLANs, you can still leverage NSX and maybe enable micro-segmentation services. So you don't have to go and do a full implementation of virtual layer two through layer seven services. You can start with VLAN bag networking, your default gateways, your physical router, and then you use NSX just to provide micro-segmentation services via neutron security groups. Okay, so there is a crawl, walk, run approach to virtualizing your network, and typically our customers will start with a security play, because in this model, you don't have to change the physical topology. Nothing changes. The VM is still sitting on the same VLAN with the same first hop router as default gateway, and then you can still enforce a firewall policy directly the, uh, on the hypervisor using uh, neutron security groups. However, if you do use overlay networking, and our, in our implementation, overlay networking uh, inherently references tenant networks, which are self-service in, in Neutron. If you use overlay networking, then you can have multiple networks 
that are consumed uh, with so as a as software co constructs. You can create, destroy these networks with no changes to the physical uh, underlay. So with a very basic topology, with a very, very ba basic architecture of your fabric, you could actually have networking services that only exist in software. And this network can be part of your infrastructure as code consumption. Okay. And then uh, this last slide uh, shows overlapping IPs. Kind of the same idea, I'm using tenant networks, overlay tenant networks, and I have you know, the same CIDR being consumed across multiple projects or inside of the same project by multiple topologies. This is stable stakes in OpenStack. In, fa in fact, I mean, this is like the first topology that Neutron supported, right? And it's one of the favorite topologies in OpenStack Cloud where you know, the environments are using overlapping IP. So we fully support that. But the networks that we provide in this case, or that we recommend, are overlay networks, are software networks, to make the consumption uh, easier, okay? I'll be happy to share these slides uh, uh, later. And then we, I think we, we, we talked about this uh, at length. We support non-overlapping IPs. Again, the trend that I'm seeing in the industry is that when we talk to enterprises that want to do OpenStack, when I have an OpenStack dial tone, in their, for, for their infrastructure as a service consumption, they say, look, but my application, I still need you know, that application to have a routable IP because I, I need to be able to SSH to that application without having to worry about another IPAM uh, NAT uh, uh, system. I, need, I have audit tools that actually monitor that application, so I need a, an actual routable IP on that app to monitor the application. My, what I'm trying to emphasize here is that typically when you see demos of OpenStack and you see people creating networks, everybody's using 192 and 68 something, right? And they show you the NAT topologies. I'm trying to emphasize here that no NAT is actually something that resonates with enterprise users, that one that OpenStack dial tone but want to treat the applications in a way from an IP connectivity and security perspective as pets, right? So, so that is perfectly feasible. There is no wrong way to do uh, Neutron here. I mean, you, you, Neutron is serving the needs, the connectivity and security needs of the application. And if that, those connectivity needs call for no NAT, then we support that. Okay, so this is a summary of the various topologies. Again, um, uh, a tricky thing here is that if you have um, tier one and tier zero routers, uh, in Neutron, they're gonna look like a single router. But in, open, in, 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 in NSX, just remember that we have a two-tier uh, routing uh, topology. Okay, so very quickly, security groups. I mean, again, the merits of distributed firewalling, I think, are well known in the industry. Perimeter security is insufficient for protecting east-west traffic. We all know that. I mean, you have to steer the offending traffic to where the firewall is. Right? And that's not the model that people are favoring right now for optimized east with security. What we've done is we put a firewall in the hypervisor, so offended traffic is actually stopped right there at, at the source. So that is what the distributed firewall is. And you, we consume this in OpenStack using neutron security groups. Also, the distributed firewall policy follows the VM throughout its life cycle. And if you retire the application, the distributed firewall policy just disappears with it. So the reminder here, let me just fast forward here a little bit, is that Neutron security groups um, are actually represented in NSX as a stateful firewall policy in our distributed firewall. Again, I'll share these slides and you'll get a little bit of the details there. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, why NSX? Well, NSX, um, again, provides, gives you the agility of software-defined networking in your OpenStack implementation. And with NSXT, we're now serving multiple hypervisors, multiple workloads, including containerized and bare metal workloads. So if you have a project where you would like, to, or um, if you would like to explore NSXT, please come talk to me and uh, we, we, we can get you going. So thank you uh, so much for your time. I am um, adding some resources here and again, happy to share this slide. I'll give you a link to, to, to where you can download uh, this presentation. And if you wanna engage, if you wanna participate, just you know, reach out and we'll be ha happy to talk to you. So I think that that's my time. So maybe one question or two, if you, and, and again, I'll stay here and we can, can you use the mic, please? So when, when you said um, bare metal is coming, which uh, OS will that, is that Photon or what? 
Uh, good, good question. Um, bare metal support will, uh, the, the ISO that will give you, Gary, is that based on uh, Ubuntu? Yeah, we're, we're going to run it. It's an Ubuntu operating system, which our and NS16 t t tends to, uh, to favor. So we'll give you an ISO. It's an Ubuntu Linux distro, and you put it on your bare metal server, assuming, of course, that your bare metal satisfy the hardware compatibility list for that support. Um, um, actually, no, uh, that's for the bare metal. Let me, let me correct. That's for the bare metal edge. For, are you asking bare metal compute? OK, so then for the bare metal edge, what I just said is true. For bare metal compute, we'll have a list of operating systems. Red Hat, Ubuntu, Red Hat and Canonical will, uh, are on that list. And what we give you is an agent based on Open vSwitch that you put inside of this compute node. And then we can manage the security and connectivity of that compute node. So that two approaches there. For the edge gateway, we give you the operating system. For the compute node, we, you provide a certified and supported operating system, and we give you an agent that you deploy. And the agent is based on Open vSwitch. Any other question? Yeah, one more question here. In your slides where you talked about like the NoNAT enterprise model, are they dual stack, IPv6 only? You know, we're all out of IP space, so how are they achieving the NoNAT functionality? Yeah, uh, good, good uh, question. Right now, our NoNAT topologies are IPv4 only. IPv6 is an evolving uh, thing in NSXT. Uh, there is a roadmap for that. Happy to talk to you about our plans there. Uh, and once we have full IPvC supports in NSXT, then we'll have it in the Neutron plugin. That is a commitment. But absolutely committed to, to, to IPv6. But, but right now, it's IPv4 only. OK, thank you. Yeah. OK, thank you so much for your time. And I'm going to hang out here and uh, answer additional questions. And also, if you want the slides, come, come, come find me. Thank you.